Greetings, another type of early alphabet that came about probably from the Phoenicians and then added to and codified by the Greeks is the Greek alphabet. And math majors know several of the symbols. Alpha, beta, or beta, gamma, delta, and so on. Now, in order to represent number, the Greeks used this idea of their alphabet. And I'm going to need to list some of them up here, so we're going to take a bit of a break, and when we come back, you're going to see the Greek alphabet. And we're back. And we see we have the Greek alphabet before us. And I can name most of the symbols by heart, but not all of them. But many of them, yes. As I've already come down this row, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, I know that one's theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu. Uh, this one is, I want to say omicron, then I have pi. This symbol right here is not actually a Greek letter, but I'll explain that in a moment. Rho, sigma, tau, psi, chi, psi, uh, phi, chi, psi, omega, and then this symbol, which is also not a Greek letter. The Greeks had a problem. They were two letters short of what they wanted to do, so they made up two letters. And I, for the life of me right now, can't remember, but we'll get to that in a moment. Now, if you want to represent an amount, it's not a problem. The Greeks did this in such a way that they were going to represent the concept of ones, tens, and hundreds. Now, what this means is they are going to use a single letter to represent certain amounts. So if you wanted to represent nine, you would simply know your ones place. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine is theta. So if a Greek was asked to express nine, they would write theta. Likewise, if they want to express, let's say, 20, tens, 10, 20 is kappa. So that one letter would represent the amount 20. So now then, if they needed their hundreds, 100 would be rho. And so any amount we want to represent up through 999 can be represented using at most three letters. And that would actually be 999, which would be, and I'm going to put this in quotes, to mean I'm representing not 999, but the concept 999 is written as this set of symbols right here. 990 followed by 9 more, and you simply add them together. And you write them in order of size. The larger the amount, the further to the left it's going to be. Now with this being the case, we're going to see that they're able to handle a lot of information. But you're probably thinking to yourself, what in the world would happen if I needed to represent more than 999? Namely, let's just get to the next amount, 1,000. So, suppose you're a Greek student, and a couple thousand years ago you were asked to represent 1,000. Well, in your textbook, in the very first chapter, they're going to show you how to represent a thousand. And a thousand comes out very simply by saying, okay, a thousand is one of a thousand. And so there's one, and they put an accent mark off to the side, lower and to the left. Means this symbol now needs to be multiplied by a thousand. And any and all symbols that need to be multiplied by a thousand are going to get that little mark put next to them. So if you want to represent 1,100,
there's 1,100. Alpha, with the symbol meaning multiplied by 1,000, followed by rho, because it is the symbol for 100. And in this way, the Greeks were able to do a lot of arithmetic. Now, with this being said, the Greeks are able to do arithmetic pretty much like what we're going to want to do, except that we're going to have to deal with this idea that we don't have simply nine symbols. We have nine times three, 27 symbols, which means some of the things that you and I take for granted about how to do arithmetic, the Greeks aren't going to be able to do. Let's suppose I wanted to add 48, and we want to add, let's say, 76 to that. And I put those in the single marks to indicate I'm trying to tell you what we're going to do. So I'm going to translate this to Greek. So 40 would be mu, one less than theta, nu, 70 would be, if this is 40, 50, 60, 70, omega, and 6 is going to be this symbol right here, and it's a symbol I don't remember the name of off the top of my head, but it's right after epsilon. And it doesn't really matter to me what it's called at this point, and I simply want to add. Because the Greeks have this sophistication of keeping tens separate from ones, and they're written in an order, I can now come back and do addition. And I can think to myself, eight and six is more than ten. So how much more than ten is it? Well, it's four more than ten, so that's delta. So I put a delta here. Now I'm going to add mu and omega, and mu and omega would give me basically 11, 11 tens. I add one to make 12 tens, so I'm going to represent two tens, which is kappa, and then I have to represent the hundred that would be carried over. So rho, kappa, delta would be the answer. And that would be the same as it trying to express what we say, which is 4, carry the 1, 11 and 1 makes 12, put down a 2 and bring the 1 over. So when we say 124, the Greeks would write down rho, kappa, delta, and they'd move on, and they're good to go. And with that, they're in a really good shape to move forward. They could also do multiplication and would look a lot like what we do for multiplication, except you would have a much bigger multiplication table. And this is a good time for me to tell you, if you go to the files section of your class shell and look in there, you will see I have a complete list of the Greek alphabet with its names, and I also have a couple of examples of multiplication tables, because you would need to have multiplication tables of ones times ones and one times ones. But then you also need ones times tens and one times hundreds. And then you would need tens times ones, tens times tens, and ten times hundreds. That's three more tables. And then you would need hundreds times ones, hundreds times tens, and hundreds times hundreds. Three more. You've got to have nine tables to have all of their multiplication tables. Hmm. You think to yourself, man, that's hard. Not really. They probably would not have thought of wasting time memorizing something they could write down. They would have a book with them, much like your textbook, and if they needed to do a multiplication problem, they simply turned to the correct multiplication table to write down the answers. And for them, it's much more about process, not memorizing the little bitty bits and pieces. So for them, nine tables isn't a big deal. It's nine pages in your textbook. I hope this helps.